Hey everyone, it's Belinda. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Denver Art Museum and KEE Roofs. The Denver Art Museum was designed by Daniel Liebeskind and opened in 2006. There are very divided opinions on this building. People either love it or hate it. I visited it just a few months ago and it's a very intriguing building. It looks like a foreign object that's been dropped into the space, but it creates an anchor in the new cultural district in the city of Denver. It's part of this new wave in museum design where the building is as important as the artwork it holds. It's definitely not a modest building and it's not the most functional. There's a lot of dead space, but it makes a bold statement. So what's the issue with the building? Well, just three weeks after its grand opening in 2006, its titanium roof started leaking. And ever since then, it had persistent roof leakage issues. I think the main issue is that the roof is so complex, there are no simple perpendicular intersections. And in some areas, the roof is so steep, it's almost a wall. The building was a waterproofing nightmare to begin with. Anyway, the general contractor settled the lawsuit with the city of Denver and the roof was completely redesigned. So the solution they came up with was to replace the entire 15,000 square feet of the roof with 80 mil vinyl roofing membrane from Sika Sarnafil, two and a half inch ISO insulation, four inch polyurethane foam adhesive, half inch dense deck prime, and finally a 45 mil fiber tight roofing. Now this fiber tight roofing was mocha colored to simulate the original titanium roof. I was looking more into this fiber tight roofing membrane and it's really impressive. To explain why, I'm going to go back to the basics of roof membranes. The two most commonly used membranes are TPO or thermoplastic polyolefin. This can withstand UV rays without damage and is heat resistant, but it's not resistant to grease, oils and chemicals. The other is PVC with liquid plasticizers. This is chemical and oil resistant, but during hot weather, the plasticizers can migrate to the surface of the membrane and dissipate which can cause this PVC roofing membrane to crack. There's a third option made of PVC and solid plasticizers, which has the best of both of the other two roofing membranes. This is resistant to chemicals and oils, as well as tearing and breaking. The most commonly used solid plasticizer is DuPont Elvaloy Ketone Ethylene Ester, or KEE. So the fiber tight roof membrane that they used on the Denver Art Museum is that third option. It's the PVC and solid plasticizer mix. Now this fiber tight roofing has many advantages over typical roofing membranes. One of them is its product formulation. The solid plasticizer or KEE is a flexible high molecular ingredient and is ideal for thermoplastic processing. The KEE is locked into the compound and has minimal plasticizer extraction. So this fiber tight lasts a lot longer than its competitors. Next is its chemical resistance. It uses this XR5 geo membrane, which makes it resistant to oils, acids, alkalis, etc. Here's a video of fiber tight's YouTube page in which they tested its performance in comparison to regular modified bitumen roofing in three different chemicals, compressor oil, jet fuel, and animal fat. These two samples were tested for changes in weight loss and other physical appearances like curling or expansion. You can see that in all three cases, Fibertite's performance was superior to that of modified bitumen. There was hardly any disintegration of the material or change in its appearance. It also has excellent puncture resistance. It has a much tighter weave than other roofing membranes. The scrim that they use is twice as heavy and has high tensile strength. So essentially you have twice the amount of fiber in fiber tight than in regular roofing membranes. This is another clip showing fiber tight's puncture resistance compared to other roofing membranes like TPO, PVC with solid plasticizers and modified bitumen. It can withstand 866 pounds of pressure, far greater than any of the other materials. It's also self-extinguishing because of its chemical makeup. This combustibility test shows how fiber tight performs in comparison to bitumen and TPO. While the flame spreads on all the other materials, fiber tight's self-extinguishing properties 
puts out the flame and saves the material. The yarns that make up fiber tight are encapsulated with this primer coat, which makes the overall material watertight. There's no need for any extra sealant. It also has really high solar reflectivity and infrared emittance. Its white acrylic top coat reflects sunlight and reduces cooling loads in summer. So all these properties lead to a long lasting product, which has a much longer lifespan than regular roofing membranes. In fact, after 25 years, Fibertite actually has 80% of its original physical properties and 60% of its original thickness. I guess the only negative thing I could find was that it still has a small amount of liquid plasticizer in it. And you need that in order to weld the seams between the sheets of Fibertite. It's unavoidable right now. I'd encourage you to go and check out Fibertide's YouTube page. I'll link it in the description below. They have some amazing videos and really cool installation demos. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful and informational. Please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more videos on automation and building construction. Until next time, I'm Belinda. Thanks for watching.